would encourage us to be very careful because we use this, that I mentioned earlier, we use this phrase to change the world um, as though it's necessarily a good thing. Would you agree with me that, that Stalin changed the world? Yes. Would you agree with me that Hitler changed the world? Yes. Yeah. So there are lots of people throughout history who have changed the world. Um, oh, I'm going to mess this up, aren't I? Was it uh, Genghis Khan? who killed so many people that it actually lowered the temperature of the planet? Uh, was really? It really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the, the carbon output from, from the moon, he killed so many people that actually changed the environment of the world. <clears throat> yeah. What's even crazier is that, and again, I think I'm going to mess this up, so I, might, I might be confusing him with someone else. But as I understand also, there's, there's some crazy statistic, like one in six people walking around has his DNA. So then he wiped out a whole bunch of people, and then he decided to repopulate the place himself. Yeah. Some crazy number like that. So he changed the world, <laughs> you know? Um, have any of you guys ever heard of the, uh, the band? I have to pause before I say it. The, uh, the Who? Not the Who. The Who. H-U. You know? uh, they were really popular a couple years ago. I mean, as popular as a band like this can be. They're like a Mongolian, I don't know what you'd call them. They call them Mongolian metal, but they sing in Mongolian, and they sing songs about how wonderful Genghis Khan is. I'll play you something from them. They played it for us just a couple years ago. It's a trip. It's, it actually is pretty interesting. And they play all, um, all um, uh, what call it? Uh, traditional instruments. So nothing electric. It's all traditional instruments. They're interesting. They were here in San Diego a couple years ago. That's how I discovered them. Because a, a friend of mine went to their concert. He posted something on Instagram. I'm like, and you just, I just I'm like, who are these dudes? Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> so I looked up one of their songs. I was like, that's really fascinating. And what's funny is if you watch their video for one of their songs, they have a, there's like a, a swastika on the guy's guitar strap thing. It's not a guitar, but a guitar like thing. And I played it for my students a couple years ago. And they saw it and they're like, oh, there's a swastika. Yeah. Does anybody know why he'd have it? No. What's that? Yeah, yeah, it's a Buddhist sign that represents peace. When you have it straight, it was the Nazis who would turn it on its side. Interestingly enough, if you're into symbolism, <laughs> turn this watch on its side and said, that's our symbol. So if you go to a lot of Buddhist monasteries, you'll see that symbol there. But again, it's not crooked, it's straight. You know, there's a difference that's there. It represents balance and peace. So, um, I like that. These guys are like, <clears throat> that's our symbol. And they're like, no, but the Nazis did that. Touch the crows. And he's like, no, no, but that's ours, historically, for thousands of years. One asshole comes along, throws on some uniform, that doesn't mean they own it. We, we still own it. It's interesting. But anyway, they sing songs about Genghis Khan. <laughs> that's the point of the, of the who. Um, but everything hinges on this idea of dying to the world. Um, if any of you guys are, are, are Christians, any of the various forms of it, that's your commandment, to die to the world. When you go to church, you, you, I imagine you would have had to have heard this at some point, that your whole goal, that your whole, I guess, commandment in life is to die to the world. How is it that a person can die to the world? Because he's not saying to die. You know, Jesus doesn't say, die. <laughs> that's your job. He's saying it's a, it's, a, it's a process of dying to, or, or rather, Paul. It is, he says it's a process of dying to the world. And probably you, you don't leave nothing behind. Like probably some people are remembered for something. And you just die. Think about it. I'll leave it broad like that. I'm not, even, I'm not even asking how we can change it for the good or the better, because however you change the world, either of those two avenues, that avenue is at least the same place. You change other people. How do you change other people? Well, let's say someone's somebody's having a really bad day, right? All you would have to do sometimes is go up and smile and say hi and good morning. You know, that could change their life. Maybe prevent someone from killing themselves. 
So if someone's in the hallway looking sad, you can walk by and acknowledge them, say hello. Or you can push them over with your boot. Get out of the way, loser. Both of those have the, have the possibility of changing the world, right? One of those can get us a situation like in Michigan, can't it? One of us can get us a situation where... Oh, <laughs> God. Thank you. By the way, have you seen the picture of the dude in, in Detroit? Yeah, exactly. Here's the thing, all right? Listen. <laughs> I tell you, know it's about to be terrible. I say, listen. <laughs> Hear me out. You give someone a haircut like that, what do you think is going to happen? Oh, God. Right? <laughs> you give your kid that haircut, you, you, your kid gets that haircut. Where either you give it to them or the kid asks for it. You know how that turns out. I, I, I blame the parents for giving the haircut more than anything else. But, but what you're hearing though is the typical, he was bullied. Anybody in here never been bullied before? In any capacity? I mean, elementary even counts. Yeah, of course it counts, yeah. In some way, everybody in here has been bullied before, especially if you're, uh, if you're on a sports team. My God, isn't that like, part, isn't that like half of the sport? <laughs> bullying your teammates and messing with each other and stuff like that? You know, I mean, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But I mean, I'm thinking back to, well, I'll leave it at that. I think of some of the terrible things that we did to each other back in school. Why? And back in college, why? Because we're buddies. <laughs> we're from the same team. That's why you do terrible things to each other. Um, I'm even thinking about some of the workplaces that I've been at where we've just, you know, been, been horrible towards each other. Why? Because we care about each other. Anybody I don't care about, like, it's like if I, if I, if if I clown on you, there's a reason for it. It's because I like you. If I don't like you, I won't even acknowledge you. I won't have anything to do with you. You know, if I give you crap over something, it's probably because I like you. That's how sometimes people show it, and I guess, like, but that's not how we show it. Oh, you're different people. You know, there's different people. I won't walk past you in the hallway and kick you down and, and, and all of that. But um, hopefully you, you, you get the idea. Yeah. So how much, so, you know, you can, there, there's, you, you have the capacity in all of these different interactions to change the world. For, for good, or for, or for evil, or I should just say for bad, it isn't necessarily evil. You can be nice to the person you're seeing in the hallway by themselves, you can kick them over. The reaction that you get from it, it isn't your fault. In other words, however that person responds, it isn't your fault. If you do that, if you walk past a person, you kick them down, and then they, they come back and they shoot the place up, it's not your fault, any, any more than it's your fault if you say hi to the person, and the person goes on and, and does something good in their life. The, the responsibility for all of those actions is on the person who does it. Now, we can say that you contribute to it. Well, certainly. But how many people have to contribute to, to a person's development before we finally say, that's the one that caused it? There is no one that causes it. Just like there's no one snowflake that thinks it's responsible for the avalanche. It's a, it's a conglomeration. A whole bunch of snowflakes coming together to make an avalanche. The same is true for a person's behavior in the world. Ultimately, what's responsible for the person's behavior is the person. And again, <clears throat> people make their own bed. But every day you interact with people, you're bringing them sheets, if you follow the metaphor. So um, this is how it is you make the world a better place, incrementally, with all of your actions. This is, interestingly enough, it's also how you make the world a worse place, incrementally, you know, with all of your actions. Um, you ever need a favor from somebody? And it's like a little tiny thing, you know, but it can be a huge thing for, for, for them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking back to, I, um, I graduated from college uh, largely because of a, of, a, of a, I should say largely, I guess so, largely because of a favor from somebody who did me a solid. Yeah. And all it took from that, uh, long story short, I'll cut this out of the video since it's unnecessary. Um, when I went through high school, um, I took a Spanish class, and um, I get 100% on the final exam for the first semester. We'll, we'll leave it at that, okay? but you understand. My Spanish teacher came to me and said, no way you get 100%. I said, got 100%. She said, no way you get 100%. I said, see you <laughs> 100%. And she just didn't believe that somebody who looked like me would get 100%. It was like a fill-in-the-blank thing. That's all it was. 
So she said, well, here's the deal. If you don't come back next semester, I'll let your grade stand and you can walk away. But if you come back, I'm going to find a way to fail you second semester. You'll be wasting your time. So I said, all right, fair enough. And so I didn't come back second semester. Um, now, fast forward, when I, was, when I was going through the university, I was in my last quarter at UCLA, and I got a letter from them saying, there's a problem with your transcripts. So I went over to the, account, to the, the office where they have like, the transcript sheet for the registrar. And long story short, they, um, when, you tran when I transferred from the community college, I only had one and a half years of Spanish. In order to, to transfer over, you have to have certain requirements. So because I missed that one semester, I didn't meet those requirements, which meant that the university was going to reset me as a freshman, which meant I was going to have to go back and take all of my first two years of classes all over again. So essentially, they were going to delay me two, three years of my graduation because of one semester. So at this point, understand, I fucking hate Ms. Ware. <laughs> Damn. She's one of those very few teachers whose names I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things that you look at it and you're like, how did I, how, did I, how did I do well on the exam? I don't know, man. I was just in the zone and it was an easy test. That's all it was. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like I was so brilliant and she didn't believe it. No, it's just one of those things that it's hard because I'm such a clown that you look at it and you're like, oh, you cheated on this, didn't you? No, I, I really didn't. But it's hard to believe. You know, you establish yourself incrementally every day, you know, making the world better, worse, or more comical with your behavior, and then at some point it becomes very difficult to believe that you could have done that one thing, you know? Some of you might know what this means, like maybe you, you lie to your parents so much that when you're telling the truth they don't believe you, and all you can do is get mad or laugh, because, you know, you can understand why they don't believe you, you just wish that they did. And so, I went back to my, to my community college and I, I talked to the, this woman who was at the records office, and told her what was going on, and she's like, oh my, so she looked at transcripts and she says, oh my goodness. You're right. And somehow, some way, it just got past everybody that I was missing this one, this one semester. So she, she looks at it and she's like, and they're going to hold you back if they're going to be back you know, to redo all my, my first year's classes. So she's like, I'm sorry, you know, that, that's, that's terrible. I said, yeah, I hear you, but, you know, I so she says, hang on. Stakes are Okay, hold on. She disappears. She comes back with a piece of paper and she says, here you go. And she just checked the class off. That's all it took. No joke. A few strokes with the mouse saved me two or three years of my life. And if not for that, I probably wouldn't have even graduated. The only reason I was there was to play baseball. Well, at that point, I was, I was going to go. I knew I was. Gonna, I wanted to go off and get a PhD and all that. But man, that's a tough thing to overcome at that point. You know? So it's like one little. You know, how much of a, of a how much skin was it off of her back to help me out in that way? I looked at it, I wasn't going to grow from the extra semester of Spanish. It wasn't like I was going to become a better person or anything like that with this thing. And so she, she took care of it. And people might say, oh, so you got, you got lucky. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, very lucky by having that right person. But you also can take a lesson from that. The lesson, of course, being sometimes in your life, you're going to be able to do a small thing to help somebody out in a big way. Don't think of it like, I'm going to pay that back. I'll do something nice for somebody else. Take it as... I'm going to do something nice for somebody every single time that opportunity comes up. Not just the one time. You know? Or you can say, well, I got lucky, but I shouldn't have, and so now I'm not going to help anybody else out either. Entirely <laughs> your call. So, anyway, everything, so everything hinges on this idea of dying to the world. And dying to the world is to, to be dead, but still living in the world. In other words, as far as the world's concerned, you're dead to it. You're not the same person that you were. You're not behaving in the same thing, in the same way that you were. Your allegiance is not to the world. Imagine if you were if you were dead, but you were still walking around in the planet, not just as a zombie, but the things of the world would no longer apply to you. The things of the world would no longer interest you. You wouldn't be trying to gain status and money and power and all of these kinds of things. You'd be doing whatever it was that you were here to do. In the case of, of if you're a Christian, when, when you're called to die to the world, the idea is you forsake all of that other stuff and you stay single-minded on the focus of, 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 of serving God, doing, what you're, doing you know, things that you're supposed to do. In the case that Campbell's talking here, whether it's religious, which we just covered, or if it's political or personal, the 
creative acts are done when you die to the world, when you no longer have an interest in those things. Because you can't divide your loyalties up. If you're, let's say there's something really incredible that you want to pursue in life, or something you want to accomplish in life. Well, the more it is that you, the more divided, so let's say that there's that one thing. Can, you, can someone give me an example of that? Because I'm not talking now. Like playing an instrument? Okay, so let's say you want to be a, a, a master in an instrument. Oh, I have a great story about that. Turns out, <laughs> wonderfully. Um, I think he watches these videos, too, so he'll, 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 know, who, he'll know who he is. Uh, a friend of mine, um, I met him because I was in a band, and we had, uh, we had sold out this, this club, over 600 people, we were jazzed about it, and then the, t two days before the show was to go on, my, our guitarist's wife came to me and just said, uh, essentially, I know that you guys are looking at signing a deal, unless you agree to give, his name was Alex, unless you agree to give Alex 50% of all royalties, he quits the band. And the show coming up was a really big show for us, there were a and people there and everything like that. And so, as the, you know, the band did what, what the band should do, we said no, but then he quits. Okay, and he quit. So then we were there. We were two days before the biggest show we had up to that point, with no guitarist. And my bass player said, "I know a guy, and he's good." I'm like really? Yeah. So we, I met this guy. His name is his name is Xavier, and uh, Xavier is the most talented guitarist I've ever heard in my life. He's unbelievable. I mean, even back then, uh, we gave him a tape of our stuff, and it was t uh, I think it was ten songs, eight songs, ten songs, and he listened to it and he's like, "Cool, I'll learn it." And then we're like, okay, but you know, the show's tomorrow, tomorrow night. He's like, oh, sorry, the face. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> so we're like, you, you want to rehearse? And he's like, don't need to. I, I can do it. <laughs> so, we're like, so I'm a guy who's like, all right, man, let's rock and roll. Let's do it. And then, you know, um, my drummer, he's a little bit more, um, a little, little more finicky about stuff. So anyway, so we walk on stage with this guy, and we, we haven't rehearsed with him, nothing. And before the first song starts, he says, hey, I rewrote the intro to this next song. We're standing on the stage. He goes, do you guys mind if I do that? It's the same time. And we're like, I'm like, cool, let's do it. What do I, I was a singer. What do I have to do? I don't have to play an instrument. I'm just, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll jump on and jump in. So, we, we, yeah, so we, we, we did this. And he was phenomenal. What it was was that he had a piece from, um, from Bach that he liked a lot. You know, the composer Bach. And he took it out of the harpsichord and he put it into, into guitar and he played it on guitar and he played it in the right time and he changed it a bit so that it would fit into what we were doing and it just fit in just perfectly, you know? And so it was just it was, it was one of those things where everything kind of came together and he and I became, became very good friends after that. Um, he, uh, he was living in an apartment and he was working at a movie theater nearby. He was working 40 hours a week. He decided that if he was working 40 hours a week, that meant that he was practicing his guitar 40 fewer hours a week. And he wanted, he wanted to get good at guitar. He didn't want to get good at being a, a movie theater employee. So he quit his job. And so what, else, what do you suppose happens after he quits his job? He loses his apartment. He becomes homeless. But he really wanted to become great at guitar. And he was great. You know, he was great. Um, I haven't played with him in a while. I still talk to him once every once in, you know, once in a while. I, should, I really should reach out to him. Um, and I imagine he's still really good. You know, but this was a guy who died to the world. He wasn't interested in, in money, in status. In, even in terms of musicianship, he wasn't even interested in fame. You know, with the band that he, he ended up joining a band with me later on, well, two, two bands, and he would do interviews. He wouldn't even go to them, really. You know? I, think, I think he was at one. I think he just kind of sat there and didn't say a single word. And so he's not even interested in fame or anything like that. You know, when we got paid, you know, <laughs> which is rarely, but you know, we divided up. He wasn't even interested in like getting his share or anything like that. It was just like, I just give him something to eat, be okay. And this was a guy who was completely dead to the world, and that was his singular focus. Now you might think like, oh, but was he? You know, did he make it? What do you mean by make it? Was he successful? Yeah, he was a great guitarist. But did he get rich and famous? That wasn't what he was trying to do. That's like asking a, you know, a surgeon. Well, yeah, but you know, did you climb Mount Everest? That's not what he's trying to do. You're going to judge him by, the, by a standard he's not trying to fulfill. You know? It's kind of like even as students. I don't judge you guys by, as students whether you're getting A's, B's, C's, D's, or F's. I judge you by well, what it is that you're trying to fulfill. And I wonder if anybody in here is not fulfilling exactly what they're trying to fulfill. 
And if you're trying to get an A, there's a good chance you probably have one in this class. If you're not, there's a good chance you're not trying to. And it doesn't make sense for me to sit there and go, you're a real crappy student, you know that? I'm not trying to be a good student. Oh, okay. <laughs> You know, it's like if, <laughs> like if someone told me, Scanlon, you're a really crappy grader. <laughs> not trying to be a grader. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to be a talker. <laughs> you know? So whatever it is that you're pursuing in your life, whether it's religious, political, or personal, so that the real acts of, of, of creativity, the ones that really do change the world, are acts in which we die to, ourselves, we die to the world. In other words, we no longer pursue those kinds of things. Now, what happens is a weird thing happens. If you get great at something, you're probably going to get those, 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 those riches and those things that you're pursuing, assuming that the, that the situation lines up just right. You know, It's just like, you know, what should you do in your life? Probably something that you love. Why? Because if you do something that you love, you're going to practice it a lot. If you practice it a lot, you'll get good at it. And if you get good at it, you'll probably find a way to make money at it. Probably. But it doesn't always work out that way. Well, nothing is everything. You know, but maybe it's because it wasn't a passion that you had. But whatever it is, he says, you know, he's not saying this is what you should do. He's just saying this isn't what happens. If you die of the world, then those things, you know, your attentions are no longer divided. You've just got that one thing that you're focused on. Whatever it is. It could be guitar. It could be being a great parent. It could be you tell me. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? December tenth approaches rapidly. Um, so week from this coming Friday.